So welcome everyone. My name is Jared and uh, we're going to be building a game in vanilla JavaScript uh, from the ground up. And I'm hoping to really teach you guys how to build a very simple game that you can then use throughout, uh, you know, in this hackathon, for example, to uh, make into something your own. Um, I'm using JavaScript. Um, let me jump over to the game first. Let me show you what we're going to create. Uh, the game is just a very simple, like memory, like little tester game. Um, it's maybe something you've never seen before. Maybe it is. Um, but the idea is uh, you, when you start the game, you have two items there. They disappear. And then you have to remember where they were and the bombs were. And uh, if you remember where it is, you're able to go to level two. And as you can see, it gets harder and harder. Here I bumped into a bomb and I died. Um, but that's basically the game. Um, and what we're going to be doing is building this game in CSS primarily to do the layout so that everything is used in the proper uh, relative units so that the game size shrinks, uh, the shrinks with the screen, basically. So we're going to make it completely responsive. And we're not going to have time to do a lot of things like making it mobile friendly and making sprite sheets and doing all those other tidbits, but those things uh, you can do on your own time. Um, again, we only have an hour, so I can't really do too much. Um, so to get started, we are going to create an account on Goom, which is a place where you can just do some live coding and host your project when you're done. So if you all can go to goom.io and then you can follow along with me. Um, I don't know, Guy, if you can put that into the chat, that would be great. Uh, if you go in here to the login button, uh, you can enter, not a login button, I'm sorry, sign up button. You guys don't have an account yet. Sign up. You can enter your name, uh, you know, give us your uh, email. So I'm going to use uh, some email here. And I'm just going to enter a, a, that email. Okay. And when you're doing that, it will create an account for you. And since you can have multiple accounts and things like that, it's going to ask you to put your password in again. And when you're done, you will have access to your coding space. And you will have your own little domain name. Mine is goodants74, which is accessible by anyone on the internet. They don't need to have an account to play your game. They don't need to have uh, an account to see your code or any of that. It's all there live. All right, I'm going to give you guys a, a minute or so to create an account. And feel, feel free to put on the chatting if you're having some issues with that. Uh, so while you do this, I'll let you know, I'm going to go a little fast in this workshop because there's a lot to uh, cover. Um, and if you need to uh, catch up, you can always go to the uh, my notes that I'm posting for you right now, which I document the flow that I'm teaching you. So if you need to copy any, copy any code, you can do that. Um, we also have video recordings of us creating this project. So you can rewatch the videos. Um, and also, I believe Tiffany's recording this as well. Um, all right. Going back to my coding space here. Sweet. Um, all right, let's get started. Um, coding now. Um, so to start, we're going to create a new project, which allows us to, um, which will bring up a, a template uh, web page that we can just use to start coding in. So I'm going to call this uh, memory game. So there you go, creating it. And it takes a little second to open up your coding editor. And when you're done, uh, when it's done, you can see here you have an index file, index.html file, where you can just type in something like hello. And over on the right, you can see the code appear. And then you have 
a JavaScript file where you can write all your JavaScript and a CSS file. So here, for example, I can put like background color black and color white and voila, you have, uh, you, you see what you, you wrote instantaneously. All right, let me just clean up my screens here. I have a lot of things going on there. All right. So to start this game, what we're going to do is we're going to, to uh, build the uh, HTML first so that uh, we have the structure of the game. Um, and basically, the game's HTML is very, very simple. It has a, some instructions, and then it has like a game board. Right? With right now, I have one little player, which is a little skunk on it. Um, so. After we're done building this, we're going to add our CSS to make it look like this, as you see here. And then we're going to jump into the JavaScript to make it all interactive and build all the game logic. All right. So jumping in, jumping into that. Um, move this over here so that I can guide it. But I, why I write. All right. Here we go. All right. So like I said, we're going to have a little modal that introduces the game with some introduction. So most games will want to do this. Um, so I'm just going to create a div here and give it an ID of an intro screen. And I'm going to make it look like a modal with the CSS in a bit. But first of all, let's just put the content in. So I'm going to put the name of the game. Um, Tester. Now I'm assuming you guys know some HTML and CSS. Um, and I'm just using HTML tags to slightly format the elements and, and so that I don't have to write too much of uh, CSS. Okay. So I'm going to put my instructions next. I'm just going to create a little div here. I could do a UL or something like that, but I'm just trying to keep things simple with the div. So first instruction is basically wait for the items disappear. And second is to find the treasure using the WASD keys. So we're going to be uh, moving the character using the WASAD keys. Uh, and then avoid the bombs. So if you hit by a bomb, you die. Okay. And my fun thing about bombs is that you can build some animation uh, later on in your own time. You can bring in like a, a animated GIF to really make it fun and even add sound effects. Doing all that in HTML is pretty straightforward. And if you don't know how to do those type of things, please feel free to reach out to us on Discord. Um, also, a quick Google search oftentimes will show you how to do fun things like that. All right, there's my intro. And uh, now I'm going to build my game board, where all the characters of the of the board of the game are going to be be uh, drawn. So for very the beginning, I'm just going to create a, a div to represent my player. And um, since I'm building out a game, um, and I really want to get to the functionality fast. I don't want to spend too much time designing things. So if you're doing this as a hackathon project, I recommend do not spend all your time, you know, with all the art. If you have a, someone on your team who's dedicated to art, let them do the art and in, in and while they're working on the art, you can uh, use placeholders. And one easy way to do a placeholder is just to use emojis. Uh, emojis uh, just allow you to have something that looks somewhat real. Um, without having to do any uh, CSS styling. So I'm just gonna grab my skunk emoji there. Okay, so now I have the basic HTML done and we're ready to now style it so that we have it look like this. Um, first of all, when you look at this, you can see that I'm using a, a custom font. And if you haven't tried it before, um, I recommend going to Google Fonts, that's fonts.google.com, where you can choose from a wide range of different fonts. And 
I chose the font uh, Rustlin, so I can just search here, Rustlin. And there's all sorts of cool fonts here uh, you can use. And the idea is you just click the font, you select what you want, and we're gonna import the font in our CSS. So we're gonna use this at import, copy the, that import tag, and move it over to our CSS file. So I'm gonna just jump right over here and just put that at the very top. Now I know you guys are probably not gonna be able to follow along because I'm moving pretty fast for this one hour. So just sit back and watch um, and uh, try, and you can copy and paste code from the tutorial uh, if you're, you're not able to follow along as fast, if you still wanna follow along. But anyway, I just imported my font. Um, you don't see it here yet, because all I've done is basically imported it to the browser. I haven't told the browser how I want to use it yet. So that's the second thing here, CSS rule. So here I can tell it where I want to use the font. What I basically want to do is use it on all elements. So I can select all any element I want using the star and paste that in there. And now all my elements, even the button element, has the uh, font applied. Okay. All right. So the next thing we're going to do with CSS is we're going to put everything in the middle and then in the center. Um, I see a lot of students who are new to coding use the center tag, which is really old um, and it kind of cuts, it really uh, isn't the right way to doing things because you want to use CSS to define how things are placed and how they look and not HTML. HTML is just, just should be the structure of the page. So to put things in the middle, what we're going to do is make the body the same size as the screen so that it knows, it has a, has a width and height to calculate what is middle. So I'm gonna make the width 100% the view width and the height 100% the view height. And when I do that, it adds these ugly scroll bars. So that's, that's because the browser adds a margin in the body. Let's get rid of those. And uh, then also I want to tell it to always hide the scroll bar. So overflow hidden, okay. no more scroll bars. And now I can center everything using display flex. So you don't know what flex box is, but it's a great way to build websites where you can have a lot of control over the layout. If you want things in a column in a row, if you want things with like a Pinterest kind of page, you can use display flex. Um, and within display flex, I can say I want in a column, a direction column, and that's gonna put my skunk back uh, down below here. So everything's back into a column. And I can uh, line items horizontally with cent line items. So everything should be in the center horizontally. And then use justify content to center everything vertically. Um, all right, so now I have everything in the middle. And next, as I'm going to make my uh, modal to look like this. So I'm just going to add some CSS to put a border and some padding and things. So let me show you how that works. So in my HTML, I call this div intro. So I'm going to select that intro using the hashtag. So intro, so I can select that one div. And here I'm gonna put border, solid one pixel green. And I'm gonna add some padding. So put some uh, padding around that text. And then I'm gonna copy all this code that puts everything in the middle. And so everything's in the middle now. Um, and then finally, I'm going to, the start button's not in the middle though. Uh, what am I missing? All right, I'll come back to that. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a gap between everything here. So I'm gonna put a gap of 20 pixels, which will, uh, should gap everything. Something is wrong. I'm just gonna, 
copy over what I had before, which is the same. All right. Must be missing something here. I'll come back to it, but uh, it's not that important, but everything should be in the middle uh, like I have here. And I just copied the same CSS. So that's interesting. Must have missed something. If you guys can see what it is, let me know. Um, it's not important for the game. Uh, the next is I'm going to style the uh, button uh, to be green. So I can just take the, the button element here and again, make the background color light green or something like that. And that makes my button like that. And I can get rid of the border that the browser puts on default. All right, uh, it just really bugs me, but okay, I'll come back to it. I'm sure I'll come to it. Um, anyway, here is uh, the modal. Um, and I added some rounded corners here that I didn't have in the other one using this border radius here. The next thing is we want to hide the skunk. We want to hide that um, the game board until we hit that start button. So in um, in index HTML, what we can do here is add a class to the board to tell it to hide it. Um, and in our in here, we can then define a class called hide and Put display not important there. Okay. All right. I, I think I know why uh, this isn't. Uh, well, I'll come back to that. Let me just make sure that the board is hidden. Everything's good. Okay. So now we have this intro page that we can instruct the user what to do, what to expect, and then have this button here that we can click on that will hide the, uh, hide the intro and show the game board. So that's what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna do that next here. All right. So in here, uh, I have this ID start here. Um, what I wanna do in JavaScript is go fetch this thing so that I can add an event listener to start my game um, and initialize everything. So in here, inside this script.js, I'm going to create a. Uh, I'm going to create a, some comments here, so you can see what I'm doing. So here, I'm going to just uh, constants for game or something like that. And in here, I'm going to create a constant called uh, start, and I'm using dollar sign so that I can look at my variable and know that it holds a uh, HTML element. And if you use jQuery, you probably used to using dollar sign for as a function to select things. In uh, native JavaScript, vanilla JavaScript, you, 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 don't, you can't use the dollar sign function. Um, instead, you just write document.get element by ID, and then you pass in that variable, I mean that ID. And now we have this here that we can use. So I can go here to console.log. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to show you how to use what's called dev tools to see what is in your JavaScript. So you can use dev tools as a tool to help you code. Um, and to do that, just go here to hit click inspect and go to the console. And you can see here, I have my button here, console lock. And I can put multiple things here. I can put like, hello, if I wanted to. And when the page uh, reloads, you can see hello, and here's the button. And I can explore my button in here on the console. Okay, so I just wanna show you that. And we'll, we'll, we'll use that later for debugging and such, which is really important skill to learn if you know how, if you need to, if you wanna build a, a complicated current game. But for now, let's just make this button do something. Uh, so I'm going to add an event listener to tell it basically when I click the button, I want it to start my game. So I'm going to create a function called init that will initialize my game. Um, so when you're doing a game, you might be familiar with 
uh, a, a game loop. And what init will do is we're going to set up the whole game and then we're going to start our game loop later on. So we're going to also going to be later on create a function called loop, which will, uh, which will call um, every single, um, every single frame. So, and we'll get into that later. I just wanted to show you that in case you're, you're familiar with the, this type of architecture. All right. So now we have an init function, and what we want to do is hide this modal. Well, well, we called it intro here. So I'm just going to copy that, paste that, and then I'm going to change start to intro. So one thing in a modern browser you can do is you can select a text, I mean a modern IDE, and then you can just do control D, and then you can change the word twice. So I'm going to kind of show you some of these tricks as we go through it. But if you're used to visual code or sublime text, it all they all do that. Um, just makes editing a lot faster. So in my loop here, well, I mean, not my loop, I'm sorry, in my init function here, I can then tell intro to hide by basically adding this class name. So you just go dot class list. Dot add hide, and then we're going to remove uh, it from the board. So I'm going to also create one for board. So again, I called that board here. Let me use my control D trick. Boom. And then I can do board uh, dot class list dot remove hide. And then when we're done, I hit the start button. The, it disappears and my game board appears. I have my little skunk here ready to do something. Okay. Um, now this isn't very interesting. Uh, it's like it's it's really a, a fog of war here with with zero visibility. So let's let's make the visibility pretty clear in what you can see. So if you look at the game, we have like a white square here. Um, so let's. You create that white square in CSS. All right. So to do that, to make things faster, I'm just going to move this here. So I hide the intro and show the board so I can style the board. All right. So I'm going to go into here, hashtag board. All right. And I'm going to make the background uh, white. And later on, you can add a background image or whatever you want there. Uh, and it's a quick Google search to know how to do that. All right, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give my board a width of 95 V min. Um, now, this is making sure that the width is 95% the smallest of two things, the width or the height. So in this case, the width is smaller than the height. So my width is 95% of my width. Now, if I make this a lot bigger, it gets to a point where my, my height is smaller than my width. And you can see here, it no longer grows because my height is fixed. So now it's 95% of my height. So this way, regardless of aspect ratio on your screen, I can also do a height of 95 demon and I always will have a square. Even if you look on your phone, you can uh, see the square. And if you're interested in building a mobile game on Goom, uh, you can always click the QR code here, take a picture of the QR code on your phone, and it will navigate directly to the page that you're editing. And so you just make edits and refresh that page, and you can basically have live coding on your mobile device. Um, All right. Um, all right. I just got an important message about my one, two, three here. Um, everything looks fine to me. Okay, I must have fixed it. All right. Let me uh, go back to my uh, CSS and styling my board. Now, the other cool thing to do in games is to have all your variables at top, um, like I did with my script. 
And I really want to show you how to do CSS variables. You can actually do variables in CSS. Um, and I'm going to make this 95B min a variable. Um, to do that, you can use the, the, the root pseudo selector, which in here you can define a bunch of variables. So one variable I'm going to create is called the board size. And here I'm just going to put 95V min. Um, and then I also can use the calc function to make my character size, which I'm going to make proportional to my board size. So you can do things like this. And if this is complicated, you can ignore it. But I just want to show you this, that you can put in your variable board size. The way you access a variable is with var. It's like a function, the var function, which will take out 95 v min. And this calc function allows you to do some basic math. So I can like divide this by, I don't know, 25. Um, and then I can take this board size and replace it here. Again, using control D and go like that. Um, and then voila, I have it there. And then let me uh, quickly style my player now. And then did I put an ID player here? I did, okay, cool. All right, so I quickly style my player. All right, um, type that in again, it's moving too fast. All right, and here uh, I can put a font size. It's just, a, it's just an emoji, so it's fonts here. And I can just put var car size. Okay, and that will then, my character grew a little bigger. And if I make this, you know, smaller now, my character will shrink with my um, board size. Now they are proportional. All right. The other thing I want to do is make be able to write code to put my skunk anywhere on the screen. Uh, right now, the skunk just goes right in the upper left hand corner because that's the browser's default. It uses a, a positioning that we don't want to use. What we want to do is position it absolute here. And with position absolute, we can give it a top and a left value, which, which can tell, which tells the browser where to put the skunk uh, relative to a coordinate system. And by default, the coordinate system is the body. So it puts it up to the body. Um, we use position relative here. We can make the coordinate system relative to the board. Um, and since player is inside a board, it can it will put it relative to that. All right, now I can move things freely. So I can put like 20 V men here and like two V men here. We'll move it, move it down and over a little bit. So I now can just control where I can put that skunk just by using the top and left properties which we'll be taking advantage of in our JavaScript. Okay, so now we have some basic uh, CSS for our uh, game. Uh, now we can jump into the JavaScript. Um, so let me move the class back over to here. Make sure things still work. Start, yeah, everything still works. All right. All right, um, let's go back to JavaScript now and let's, uh, add a few things that we're going to need uh, in this initialization. We're definitely gonna need a variable to hold the, uh, the player. So I'm gonna have dollar sign player here. And um, so I have that there now. Um, I'm also gonna need some constants to hold the characters I'm gonna use for my treasure and for my, uh, my bomb. So my treasure here, I'm just gonna go over here and search for coin. You can use a different emoji, of course. Copy that, put that there. That's gonna be my treasure. And my bomb, move that over there and skip a uh, bomb. Do that. All right. All right. Now I have some more interesting things to put, add to my game. Um, I'm also going to need to put some variables that are going to change throughout my game. 
All right. So uh, first thing we're going to need to do is we're going to our character is going to be moving along at some speed and in some direction too. They might be moving up, down, left, right. So we're going to create a variable uh, called velocity so that we can control the speed in the x direction and in the y direction. Okay. And then also I'm going to add a leveling system in here. So let's start out with level zero. That way, when we hit the coin, we can go bump up this level and such. All right, just kind of give you a sense of how we're controlling this game. Um, next, uh, let's, before we get into more of the variables and things like getting to levels and stuff, uh, let's get the character to move actually. Uh, well, what we want to do is we hit the W key. We want it to go up, A, S, go down, A, N, D, left and right. All right. Um, to do that, we're going to create a function. I'm going to call push that will um, push our character whenever we uh, hit a key on the keyboard. And to tie push to a key on the keyboard, we need to add an event listener to the uh, actual the whole window of the page. So again, just add event listener, just like we did with the button. And we're going to do key down. Whenever they hit a key down, we're going to call push. And we want to know what we pushed. So luckily, this event passes in a variable called e here that we can use. So I'm going to uh, create a simple switch statement here that will be uh, e dot key that we can get the actual key value from. Uh, and again, I'm just show you console log dot e. If you want to know what e is, you can always console log, go to inspect, go to console. Now, if I start hitting w, you can oh, sorry hitting w here on the window. Uh, I'll have to start the game. You can see something appears. If I hit D, something appears. If I hit the left arrow, I get or arrow right, arrow left. You can see I get all this information about the key I pushed. All right. So in my case statement, I can put in if E dot key is W, or I can put in like case uppercase W in case I have caps lock on. Or if I'm using the arrow keys instead, I can do arrow up. I can make something happen. What I want to make happen is changing the velocity. I can do velocity dot y equals to 1. Let's just use 1 for right now. Okay. And then I can just copy and paste that and then change things around for a. a is arrow left, um, and then I'm changing x to negative 1. W A S S is arrow down. That's uh, arrow up is negative 1, I should say, because it's going up. And in the computer graphic world, y goes down. Um, and then finally, B, which is arrow right, which is going positive one in that direction. All right, so now I can change the velocity based on what I'm doing. Let me get rid of that console. All right, closing that. All right. Um, all right, so now we, we're changing this velocity, but we're not really making anything move yet. Um, so what we're going to want to do is um, basically in our uh, init function, we're going to need to start our game loop. Okay. So in here, in the window object, which is the master global object in the browser, there's something called request animation. Frame. And the cool thing about this is that whenever the browser is ready to draw a new frame, you can have it call a function. This way, your loop isn't blocking. It, it's well always, so if some reason your network uh, if your browser is doing a lot of processing, your game will naturally slow down and not skip any frames. Instead, it would just make each frame a little slower. Um, 
And then in the loop, when we're done doing stuff in the loop, we want to call that again so that it will call loop again and again and again and again and again and again. So again, I'm gonna I'm just put console.log high here so you can see this happening. Back console start. You can see here it's calling high very fast. And uh, I don't know if I mentioned it, but 60 frames per second is the maximum speed on browsers. Okay, I got that going. I got my game loop going. So now I just need to draw my character and such. Now this is the the uh, tricky part in that our character, our CSS, is all in this vmin units. Uh, remember, we wanted to make it always the same, no matter what the um, what the uh, screen size is. So what we're going to need to do is get uh, in our in our code here. We're going to need to get the position of everything in pixels and then convert it into uh, that, those V min units, which is pretty easy to do. It's just uh, basic math. Um, so to do that, we need to define a we need to basically define a bunch of variables here. So the first thing we want to do is get the style of the player so we can get what the current left and top is. And luckily, window gives us this thing called get uh, computed computed style dollar sign player. And now with this, we can get things like, watch, I can just console log style. Um, and let me just show you what that looks like really quick. Inspect, uh, start, console. Okay, uh, let me, we can see here's all, all the properties and it's being logged multiple times because I have it in my game loop. Um, so you can see, uh, it just refreshed, I'll stop the loop here. You can see here's all the CSS properties for the thing and there's like a thousand of them or something. Um, just let you know, we have all that data now we can use to calculate things in the game. Um, all right, the next thing we want to do is find the bounding box of the player. So we know where it, uh, what's, what, the, what its size is and things. Uh, and we'll get into, so I'll put player box. And luckily here, we can just do player dot get bounding client rest. And other things we want to know is um, the size of the board, because we're going to need to make things proportional to that. So board, and we have that board variable. And we also want to know the size of the whole screen. So we can use the body box. We can use document.body to get the size of the screen. All right. Now. Um, we can create a uh, simple move function that we can use to um, move our character and draw it again. So let me write this down. We're going to create a, a we're going to create a move function and then a draw function, here, which will draw the character. So this is part of this typical game loop. Move means you do all the math you need to do behind the scenes, and then draw is do whatever you need to do render the thing on the screen, All right? Um, so before we do those two functions, I'm going to figure out what is smaller, the width or the height. So I can just do constant min here and get the smaller of the two. So math.min of my body box dot width and body box dot height. And the math, you know, games are a lot of math and a lot of uh, transformations of things. So hopefully this gives you a sense of how to do that in JavaScript. Um, all right, so we got that min value that we're going to need. All right, now to move the character, we're going to need to know the player style, uh, the player box, and the, um, the board box and that min value, All right? So let's create that value function min move now. 
that we can actually move the actual DOM element. Okay. Um, so in the move function, I need to get the, in CSS, I need to get the, the left and top properties. So in here, I can do let X is going to be the left um, and it's going to be player style dot left. Okay. Now this is a string, so we're going to need to convert it into a, uh, a number. So we use parse float to do that. And why? Same thing here. Uh, top. All right. So now I have the left and top position of my character in pixels. All right. Now I want to uh, change the speed, uh, velocity dot x, whatever my speed was. I'm going to uh, add it to my x. And same thing for my Y. So I'm going to copy that, use my control D trick, just change that to Y. But this unit here is in V min. So I need to convert it to pixels before I can really add it. So what I do then is I just take the min of the width and height and divide it by 100. Okay. All right, there we go. Now we can just return that new position to draw our character with. So in JavaScript, you can just return two variables by just creating an object out of it. Um, and then here, you can unpack those two variables using this notation. All right, so then when we draw, we can just pay pass an x, y, and min, so we can do that conversion. And draw here, will then allow us to draw. So now we need to actually manipulate the actual player to move the player to a different location. So we want to do player.style.left, change that left property. And what we want to do is basically x, which is in pixels, and convert that into vmin by just doing that, and then adding the units. Top, and then this is top here, and this one is Y. All right. All right, so that was a lot of code. Um, let's see if it all works. Start. Um, uh, something is going wrong, so inspect. Console. Player styles not defined, line 47. Oh, I forgot to put in my inputs. So I can just copy my inputs and put them here. And I think I forgot my inputs here, too. That. All right, so hopefully you can see how when I have an issue, you can see how I quickly resolve it. So you can do that during your time as well. Start. Now my character moves and it flies off the screen and uh, it's gone. So a couple issues here. One issue is I haven't have it a way to stop my character. I just move it and add some velocity and it just flies off. So to do that, what we need to do is add a key down, key up a bit. So when I release the key, I want to stop everything. So I'm going to just do a key up here and do a stop. And then here I'm function stop. I can just, no matter what key I released, I can just set my velocity back to what it was at the beginning. Okay. So now when I play my, when I move my character, it can stop. All right. Um, next, um, I want to, I'm moving my character, but then I also want to um, make sure my character doesn't fall, exit my box. So right now my character is off the screen because I need to employ these constraints within the box. Okay. So then um, here, in when I'm moving things, I can add some constraints. Well, one constraint is I want the box never to leave the, the edge of the box, which is right here. 
uh, which is a little bit from the edge of the screen here. So let me call that max xx equals to the width of my board. So that's that board box um, dot width. And I don't want the right edge of my player to go off the box. So I need to subtract my the width of my player box from that. And then same thing for max y. All right, so then I have that, those constraints. And then I can just redefine x. I can say x is equal to, well, I don't want it to be less than 0. So I can say 0 or x. And then I can do a math.min here to say that whatever this outputs, I don't want it to be bigger than max x. And then I can copy that and do a y. So here, y, y, y. And I start the game now. Um, it's, 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 you can't get over there. Okay. Um, all right. So there's, there, there is that those tricks there. Um, and I think we can continue on. Um, all right. Next, now we have this all moving. Uh, we can now add our treasure. So what we're going to need to do next is there's a lot more work to be done. And I, I know this was pretty uh, ambitious to do in an hour. But I really wanted to get you guys started on how I build a game. I mean, started to learn how to build a game in vanilla JavaScript and understand the tools you need to use to build that game to learn. Um, so I might not finish everything because I know we're about halfway through right now and we have only like 10 minutes left. So what we're going to do uh, now is I'm going to actually, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy the game over. And then I'm going to have a working game and spend the next 10 minutes kind of explaining to you some of the code. That way we can work with something that, that is known to be working. Um, in the tutorial uh, here, uh, view, um, there's a place here where you can view the code. Okay. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm just going to copy everything over. Uh, also, you can over here clone project to your coding space too, which will copy everything for you. Um, so I'm going to copy this and put it into my index. It should be basically the same. Um, and then I'm going to go to script, copy that to my script. And then I'm going to go to styles and copy that to my styles. Okay. All right. Now, the game should just work as I originally showed you. So let's just test that. Start. The bombs disappear. There was a bomb here. I click it. I die. OK. All right. So in the next 10 minutes, I'm going to walk you through some key, key concepts that we're using. Let's start with the CSS, because we're here. Um, one thing is this hover. If I hover over an element, I can change it in CSS. The other really cool thing I really wanted to show you was uh, transitions. Uh, if you start the game, um, if you start the game, let me show you this code here. When you start the game now with this new code that I copied and paste, there's something called set timeout that will call a function after some time. And this function will add the class hidden to my reward and my obstacles. So my reward and my, ob my obstacles are the bombs, by the way. And then this class hidden, whenever it gets applied to an element, it will slowly transition the opacity from a default value like 1 to 0. And you can control how slow by using this 0.5 seconds. So if I make this like 1.5 seconds, for example, when I start the game, these uh, items slowly appear a little slower. OK, so there's something also in CSS called keyframes, where you can actually build a complete animation 
out of that you can uh, repeat multiple times and you can control in JavaScript to do some really cool effects. And I recommend you guys look into that. Um, the next thing is the um, script.js file. And um, in here, I already showed you the set timeout here. The next thing is this level data. So at the very beginning up here, um, I created levels, I created as an array. And each, I have a set of properties here that change as the game gets harder and harder and harder. So I have like obstacle count here. And when you hit a, when you hit the coin, it basically adds one to the level. As you can see, uh, see, let me show you that logic. When you hit the coin, it uh, right here, it adds one to level. Um, and then there's code in here that will then like calculate the obstacle count, the time and the speed. So for example, where I was down below here is level data dot time and level data, you can just double click here and see it's just, um, see it show up here. So you can see it's just whatever level I'm on. Um, that way you can add, uh, you, can, you can use um, these properties to make the game easier or harder as they progress through it. Um, the other thing in the thing I wanna show you is uh, if the game is uh, over, you wanna kill, you wanna stop the animation loop. Um, and the way I'm doing that right now is down below here where I handle failure, which happens when you hit the bomb, cause show game over. And whenever the game over, I just reload the page. So that's a really simple way of stopping the animation by just reloading the page. Um, but one thing you can do is there's something in the window called, uh, uh, there's a very window.stop animation frame to, to uh, stop the animation. I, I don't wanna get too far into that, but I just wanna show you there is uh, a variable there, a function you can use off of window to do it. Um, the other really cool thing I wanna spend the next three minutes doing is describing how collisions work. Um, a lot of game frameworks just have collisions built in, um, but it's really easy to add your own physics into games, I mean, some types of physics, and collisions is one of them, gravity is another one, I wish I had more time to show you gravity, but uh, with collisions, what you can do is create a function that you take two boxes, and you can imagine the bomb being wrapped in a bounding box and a character in a bounding box, and these boxes have four sides, left, top, right, bottom, and top. And then the browser actually has a function that get bounding box to give you the bounding box. So you don't have to keep track of that. The browser does that for you, which makes programming games in the browser really fun. But anyway, um, you just create a simple function here and you compare the sides. And by just comparing the sides, you can determine if something collides or not. So if it's completely, if the box one is completely over to the left of box two, it's not colliding and so forth. Um, now in this collides function, you see how it's being used. Uh, I have this function called check collisions here. Um, so in the game loop, after we draw everything, uh, after it's, everything's been moved, we can see if the player is colliding with the reward or the obstacles. And if it's colliding with, and you can see here with the read reward box, I have an HTML element here, reward, that I get the, gaunt, the bounding client rect, which just returns that top left, right, and uh, uh, bottom. And same thing with player, I have get bounding client rect. And then with my obstacles, I have an array of obstacles that I can just convert into array of bounding block recs using the map. And this check collisions here will then, um, you can then check here to see if the player collides with the uh, reward or if it, uh, if it collides with some of, some of the uh, obstacles or the bombs. And you can handle the case and by just returning a different case statement here and basically handling the success or handling failure based on what happened. And in here, you can you know expand the game onto multiple ways. Um, I think there's one other thing I wanted to show you. What I was doing is uh, the treasure is um, 
being created um, dynamically. So the reward is not in the HTML here. Uh, instead, when I'm setting up the board, uh, I'm creating the uh, an element, a div element, and where I'm passing in that treasure emoji inside, giving it an ID so I can style it. And then I can manipulate from here. So I can programmatically create as much rewards I want. And you can see down here, I'm creating a bunch of obstacles. So I have a level data, I have an obstacle count, and I have this while loop that just creates lots and lots of obstacles. And then it adds it to the board here. Um, so that's the gist of the game and the logic and, and the all the uh, uh, the methods that I'm using to create what I just showed you. Um, and I'm going to wrap it up here. I have last like four minutes left. So I'd rather uh, spend like four minutes uh, answering any of your questions you have um, and go from there. So anyone still with me? Um, any comments or any questions, guys? <laughs>